This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Ting. All right, it's time to get our persistence on. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right, here's how we do it in Linux. Okay. We are going to Linux. be using an awesome tool called AutoSSH. Penguins. You can get it over here. And basically, AutoSSH is a magic tool that will automatically restart SSH sessions if they go down. And this is all, you know, uh, came about from this cool idea called RS Tunnel or Reliable SSH Tunnel. Aww. And since then, this thing has been compiled to work on OpenBSD, Linux, Mac OS. You can even do it with SigWin on Windows. I mean, yeah, SigWin. But um, it's pretty cool. It's freeware. And I like it because it is available on so many. Uh, did I mention it's open WRT compatible? That's pretty cool, Ooh, too. nice. So I've been using Ooh. it a lot. I really like it. And it's neat in that it actually m monitors through a separate port. And so it's pretty cool. Because even if, like, a. Um, even if you have a connection there, but it just hangs, mm -hmm. it'll still restart it. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Super useful. Yes. Um, I'm on Ubuntu, so it's sudo apt get install. Gitter. Auto SSH. Hooray. Totally have your password now. There we go. Yes, you do. I'm just kidding. All right, so now that that's installed, pretty much uh, we can use auto SSH. Whoops. to invoke our SSH session. And basically, there's only really one parameter that we're that interested in, and it's right here. It's the, the log TAC, file. It's TACM. Oh. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how, for example, we can use auto SSH to um, connect to a server and what the different flags are. So we do auto SSH, TACM, and this is going to specify the monitor port. Okay, And there's some configuration scripts you can do, but I just like to do this all in the command that we're doing on the line. And we're going to do, um, I like to use port 20,000, because mm -hmm. you know that's fun. And then I also like to do a TAC N. And so you'll notice TAC N isn't listed up here, because that's not an auto SSH um, parameter. But it is, is an SSH parameter. So if I were to, for example, come over here and say man SSH, you're going to see that there's a bunch of these different options. There's TAC capital D, our favorite for the dynamic. Mm -hmm and whatnot. And so if we take a look at TAC capital N, we'll see that it says, do not execute a command on the remote end. Oh. Meaning, just go ahead and connect. We can actually set it up so that we uh, SSH and run a command over on that server. Ooh. It's pretty cool, but I don't want cool. to. I'm going to use the TAC N option. And so then, just like any other SSH, I'm going to go ahead and specify my uh, username and the host. So in this case, it's going to be Ardwolf at relay.wifipineapple.com. And then I'm going to put an ampersand at the, uh, at the back end of this. And so what that What's does. What's that for? So the ampersand in this command prompt, what it's going to do in Bash is say, go ahead and run this command, mm -hmm. but don't go ahead and leave it interactive right now. Uh, put it in the background. And so when I hit Enter now, I'm going to be, rather than be in my terminal over at relay.wifipineapple.com. Mm -hmm. not going to be in the shell. The shell's still there. It's running in the background. It's going to return me to my local machine, and it's going to give oh, okay. me the process ID. Let me show you here. So I run that, and you see, oh, I hadn't set up my key files for that. I thought I had. That's really weird. Yeah, I'll stop that and do ssh copy ID hardwolf at relay.wifipineapple. Com. OK, and so now my keys have been copied over. So if I were to say SSH now interactively, you'll see that it'll go ahead and just connect. Mm. Hooray. Okay. OK, so I've got my keys set up. And so if I come back to that command that I set up, auto SSH, with my TAC M, so it monitors on port 20,000, and then TAC N for no commands, mm -hmm. and my user at my host, and the ampersand, you can see it's running in the background as 3206. And now I have my connection. You know, I could nice. have added the TAC D8080 to do a dynamic. I could have done the TAC L for a local or TAC R for mm -hmm. uh, um, remote. But what's really cool is if I do. But instead, you put that TAC N. Yes. OK. So um, if I do PS aux and then grep for, uh, say, SSH, I'm going to see right here that I actually have auto SSH running. 
-hmm. Okay. In fact, there's another really easy way to do it. Let me clear this or control L and do PID of auto SSH. And it says 3184. And so it's going to be monitoring SSH. And if anything happens, it'll go ahead and restart it. And so I can, the only way to stop this now is if I actually kill it from the command line with kill. And then I can either do 3184 or you can do a backtick head of, which is the command that I just did, auto SSH backtick. And so what this is back saying, tick. back tick, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's actually the tilde key, uh, except yeah. for that shift. Kind of forgot about that one. And so what will happen is when I hit enter, it's going to execute what's in the back tick first, give it the standard out, which in this case is 3184. Oh, okay. And it's the equivalent of me typing in kill 3184. And there we go. And so if I grep for it again, if I uh, check my PS, I will find that. There it is, 3184. And I did not kill it because I need to do sudo kill minus 9 pit of auto SSH. Now let's look for it. And there oh, it is. Yeah, okay, it's so now. it's gone now. Okay. Forgot about that. I had to uh, sudo kill minus 9. But regardless, mm -hmm. there you go. And that's how you can go ahead and create yourself a persistent SSH connection. This is super useful if you want to script like having a dynamic SOX5 proxy to a host up in the cloud and uh, not have to worry about having something interactive and leaving a shell open. It's pretty cool in that sense. Uh, so stay tuned because in just a bit, Shannon's going to be showing you guys how to do something very similar with some native Windows tools for you guys over there in Windows land. Windows. By now you've heard us talk about Ting. They're the sensible alternative to the crazy contracts that you're going to find at the major cell phone carriers. Well, their customer first approach to service and their pricing model is a breath of fresh air. Simply pay for what you use. Minutes, messages, megabytes, they're all billed separately. In fact, you hardly even have to consider what plan to choose since Ting will automatically bump you up or down depending on what you use. So stop paying for service that you aren't using or getting penalized for using too much. In fact, if if you're stuck in one of those lame contracts, fear not. For the entire month of May, Ting is running a dump your contract promotion where they'll pay up to $300 in early termination fees to one lucky winner every day. Head over to ting.com slash fact5 to learn more and if you sign up through this URL, you'll get a $75 credit onto your first month of service. Again, that's ting.com slash hack5.